Good morning. So Ms. Boscat um, is back because she apparently left treatment. Yes, Your Honor, Ms. Boscat did give me some fairly extensive explanation regarding why she left treatment. And I would like to request a further review date so that I can investigate those circumstances. Absolutely not. She's already been sentenced. Her sentence was simple. 365 days in the Washtenaw County Jail, credit for seven days to be released to residential treatment. She must complete that time if she left. Yes, Your Honor. Not sure what there is to discuss. So she's already been sentenced. She's to continue her sentence. Yes, Your Honor. Come on. Can I just clarify, because her sentence was with a potential release to treatment and obviously that didn't work out, does her sentence still include the potential for that given the circumstances? No, she's already been released to treatment. She apparently does not want to, to do that. So, no. Okay. We're, she's, hmm. do, do we have the updated credit at this time? Can I say something? Ms. Basket, I, Ms. Basket, you may. I don't know if it would necessarily be a good idea for you to do so. I mean, it, I, unless she's going to say something that gets her in contempt, she can't hurt herself. What do you want to say, Ms. Basket? Okay, when I was in residential, I went to residential, and um, what happened was uh, there was uh, another resident there touching me, and when I told staff, that staff had relationships with that uh residents resident um so nothing was about uh came about the staff lady that was working she wouldn't put me on zoom to get my uh medication my um psych meds or anything because she had a thing against me because they had something going on so i had to wait until my agent showed up and when my agent showed up i was not on my meds and she took me out of the facility put me straight into transitional housing which i wasn't on my meds i i, I was only in there a week so i didn't get the um the therapy and stuff that i needed before i went straight into transitional when it's transitional without my medication and my rights were you know um violated and then when i went they put me in transitional first time in transitional i don't have a phone i never wrote a bus line or anything and you have to do everything on your own and i just didn't know how to do that so i was late coming to the house after the bus ran i was late coming home i just i didn't leave just to leave well, if you're late you get kicked out that that's what happened i didn't just and i didn't relapse i i mean i've been doing i'm on my suboxone now and i'm on my psych meds I didn't just leave to leave. I'm in a custody battle with my child. I'm, I'm really trying. Like, I was just coming home because I didn't know. I didn't. I, you got to do that. I've never Ms. done Ms. that. Ms. Basquette, that is enough. Mr. Lebo, which program was she in? No, I think I need to confirm this, Ms. Basket. Ms. Basket, which facility were you in? I was in Home and New Vision, and my agent, she knows more about, like, uh, yeah, I was only in there a week, and I didn't get, you know, I felt like I was just uh, pushed out to the wolves. I never had to live, like, I never had stability in my life, and I was supposed to get that in, uh, before I went to transitional, and I never got that. I never got stable enough to go to transitional, because I'm bipolar and stuff, and I wasn't on my meds. You know, everywhere I looked to get help, it was, I wasn't getting it until my agent showed up. And she was in tears about what was going on. And she knows more about this than I do. Ms. Boskett, who was your agent? Ms. Howard. She's been my agent for a long time. From where? Uh, MDOC, from um, the prison. She's been my agent for a long time. And she can explain this better than I can. Ms. Boskett, I've, I've had enough. Thank you. Okay, I apologize. Ms. Straub, are you present? I am, Your Honor, but this is Ms. Johnson's case, if you'd like her to is it? On. Yes, okay. Good morning, Ms. Johnson. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Boskett has a very elaborate 
story about what happened from the home in New Vision. Obviously, if you've been listening to this, she was apparently only there a week before they put her in transition. Transitional housing is what she's she's claiming. And I need to have some follow-up. Mr. Lebo is going to do his own follow-up. And I want to hear whether or not this is true, um, that she was there for one week before she went to transitional housing. And she said that uh, Ms. Howard, who is her MDOC agent, uh, came to uh, Home and New Vision and is familiar with this. So if you could reach out to her while Mr. Lebo reaches out to whoever he needs to reach out to or do whatever he needs to do to do his own research. I'm going to give her this, uh, unless there's an adamant objection, I'm going to give her this adjournment so I can see if she's telling me the truth or not. But Ms. Sounds good, Your Honor. I can contact Ms. Howard right now and see what I can find out. All right. Ms. McDuffie, any objection? No objection. All right. We're here for sentencing today. Have you had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence investigation report with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Oh. We did, Your Honor. Thank you. Any corrections, additions, or deletions to be made to it? No, absolutely not, Your Honor. We are um, we really appreciate the recommendation for probation and um, we're in full agreement with it. Um, the only thing I guess I would know is um, I'm not familiar with this program, I'm, but I'm also pretty new to Washington County, but um, Mr. Ellis said he has been attending King of Kings meetings, um, and that's substance abuse targeted, right? Yes. Um, is that a church you said? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. He, he said he's gotten um, to know a group of people there, and he really enjoys going there. So I don't know if there's any way we could. Um, you said that's two times a week. So if we could substitute that for the AA meetings, or if he could do that in combination, maybe. I think what it is, and I'm not positive, but. Some of the AA meetings name themselves special programming names, and mm -hmm. that just might be the sessions that he attends because uh, they, they have different names for the various sessions that they go to. So it's probably an AA or NA program anyway, yeah. um, okay. but just name that. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Anything from you, Ms. McDuffie, on this? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the recommendation itself in terms of the term of probation, everything is fine. I have, um, I echo the concerns of probation that he is not going to be, or is unlikely to be successful based on what we've seen so far. Even beyond what's in the report, Mr. Ellis was here. We had an extended hearing where he had previously missed 17 tests. And at that time, he did not seem to be um, particularly coherent. And I think his attorney, who, who was Mr. Lebo at that time, explained that he, um, was not expecting him to test positive for anything except for THC. The court ordered him to go test within 24 hours. He said that he didn't have any money, but the court reiterated he needed to test within 24 hours. I saw after that point that Mr. Ellis reported to test at Community Corrections with no money, and therefore um, he was not able to test, obviously, at that time, and the bench warrant issued. The problem with that is that his attempt to report was on a Friday um, after I think a, a, possibly a Thursday docket. I don't have the exact dates in front of me. When he was arraigned though in custody, um, that was a Wednesday and he seemed like he was even more disoriented. He was in medical whites on detox observation by the jail almost like several days later, that was on the 24th that he was arraigned in custody. And I'm not aware of anybody ever being placed on detox status at the jail and medical observation for THC. So I don't know what was going on with him at the time, um, but given the underlying case here is about substance use, I appreciate that he was, I guess, honest with the assessor about the substances he has used, but the report also states that he has been clean from all substances aside from prescribed medications for four to five months. I don't know what the date of that assessment was. Um, to create a scenario where that could possibly be true. So I'm concerned about Mr. Ellis's insight. I'm concerned about what is starting to look like a perpetual state of confusion about pretty much everything. Um, and we, um, I don't know about the status of his prescriptions. I know that he was taken off the docket uh, last week or recently because of some additional violations with community corrections. There's a violation I think as well too. So I'm just 
generally concerned about Mr. Ellis and what it's going to take to get him to comprehend where he is, what he needs to do so that he can adequately address his problems. Response. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Ellis has been, um, I, I think there's um, several issues, but I think his mental health has really been um, poor. I think it is improving. He is working with community mental health. Um, his mom here is a big support to him, Pamela Brown. Um, she did bring me here. She does have full guardianship of Mr. Ellis. Um, so he is on several medications, all prescribed by community mental health. He did tell me that he provided that pictures um, at the time of doing his um, sentencing, his um, probation intake. I did ask if he could send those again. Um, as far as substance abuse, um, Mr. Ellis does say, except for marijuana, he has been clean lately. He said he'd be willing to submit a test today directly after this. Um, but I do think he's open. I think he he himself said he is worried about probation, um, you know, just being able to accomplish everything, having slip ups, maybe I don't think he's free from substances in that way. So I don't think he he would say that either. I think he's very worried about his, um, uh, I guess, his using substances and, and going forward. So he is open to treatment. He wants to do the Don Barnes assessment. Um, I let him know going forward in probation, he absolutely has to test. I know there are some concerns. You know, his mom is his caretaker. She just expressed to me um, before we came in here, worrying about being able to make the payments for the testing. I think she has limited income and does does pay for everything at the moment. But I told her we can work together. Maybe I can refer them to our social work division, um, but they're gonna have to be able to meet those requirements for testing. Um, and he knows going forward that um, what will happen if he doesn't meet the requirements of his probation will be severe. So uh, but he feels pretty confident that he can't do it going forward. And I think his mental health is in a much better place. He's doing what he needs to on that. So I think he's in a different place today than he has been. Um, in recent months. What would you like to say, sir? Obviously, I'm very concerned about this. You didn't test as you were ordered and you haven't been testing. And I know you can say you've been clean, but I have no way of knowing that. If you have been testing, we would know that. There's currently a bench warrant outstanding for you right now for failing to test, just like the prosecutor said. What would you like to say? Um, nothing uh, really, Your Honor, but uh, I was a little bit confused on when they transferred me from Judge Simpson um, to to this court. But uh, I uh, agree with all the terms, and I will continue testing. And it was more about what I, I actually needed to do, and this is going to give me a little bit more closure on, like, you know, like, what I need to do to finish probation. But I'm, I'm, um, I agree with the, with the, with the probation, everything you guys say. So probation is designed to try to get you the help that you need so you don't end up in this situation again in the middle of the store, argue with someone over a bottle of, of, of beer. That's, that's, that's what we're trying to do. But our trying only comes from giving you directions and orders that you have to follow. If you follow them, then you can become a better human being and have a better life. You don't follow them, then you end up in custody, you end up in jail because we think you are a, a nuisance to society. That's not who you wanna be. So you're either gonna comply or you're gonna sit in jail because we're worried that you are gonna be a danger to the world. Yeah. You've got a lot that you've gotten yourself into. Sounds like you have some challenges that you've been self-medicating in various ways. And your mom's here trying to help you, but now she's shouldering more of a burden because of that. So I don't know whether you can work or can't work because I keep hearing that mom can't do it. So I don't know if you get assistance. I don't know if payment comes to you in some way, shape, or form. But there should be something. Like either you can work and you should be making your own money, or you can't work and there should be an application file for you to get assistance. So either way, you should be contributing. Yes. I agree.
Today, I got to figure out whether I think it's good to uh, take this bench warrant off and send it you as has been recommended, or whether I should just send you over to the jail right now and start this process. What do you What do you think you can do? I think I can finish uh, probation definitely. Yeah, um, I got uh, opposed a month ago. I got more supporters, um, you know, that got my back. And uh, I quit hanging around like the, the crowd that I used to hang around. And I figure that's working a, a lot better. And uh, my kids are in my corner, you know, and I, I'm at the house with the kids. And, yeah, they're very supportive too. I don't normally do this, but mom is here and she raised her hand. What would you like to say, ma'am? Please step up to a little, we'll get a microphone for you, okay? Good morning. Good morning. My son is not a bird. He's my son. And um, I'm going to stick to, with him through thick and thin. He has um, a support. And he's not a burden financially. What it is is a social security keeps um, denying. So it's an appeal. So um, he can have his financial help. What I said to the attorney was that it was hard to get the $12 because I used the DoorDash and make sure, you know, things um, he can um, pay for the things. And it's not, I don't believe he missed 17 because I know I've been taking him to um, drop. But the day that um, when he got out of jail and I was there, they said to make sure that he had to do it, but the funds wasn't there. I didn't have to do it. But they were breaking on uh, Social Security. He has dreams. He has what? Dreams. You know, he wants to buy a trailer, you know, and um, be self-sufficient and things like that. And Jordan with Community Service really really helps along with the other people um, that he has services with. So right now, I think he's on the right track. Um, I believe he is because I'm always there when he goes to his appointments and stuff like that. So I'm solely supporting him. And no, he's not a burden. All right, ma'am, this is the report that I get from Community Corrections. It oh, okay. shows whether he has been testing or not. Mm -hmm. And he has missed 17 times. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to be very clear with you and with him as his guardian. And if he misses again, I'm going to put him in jail. Okay. So he's got a test. Okay. I appreciate everything you said here. We like to take care of our, of our children. But where he shows up in the world is when he comes before me. And then I got to figure out what we can do about that. Or Ms. McDuffie can do about that. Ms. McDuffie. Do you have something else you wanted to say? I appreciate and I thank um, Mr. Ellis's mom for being here in support of him and supporting him. I don't think that the court referred to him being a burden as it, she, the court didn't refer to him being a burden, right? It's the burden of everything that he has to do, causing additional stress, I think, on everyone else. And um, I, I thank her for transporting him to testing and helping out in that way. But I think the issue is that she probably is always there when he goes to his appointments. The problem is when he doesn't. And I don't know to what extent she knows when he calls in and is told today is your day to report to test or how often she knows when he is expected to report versus him coming to her and relaying that and saying, I need a ride to go test today. It's not her responsibility, right? It's his. But I just wanted to make sure that she understood and the court already gave her the report um, how that process works. And she may not be aware of the full extent of his requirements in that way. That's all. So I'm going to follow the recommendation. It's a sentence of this court that you serve 365 days in the Washington County Jail. You're going to get credit for five days that are served. The balance of that time, 360 days, it's going to be suspended. What that means is if you do what you're supposed to do, you don't have to go back to jail. You mess up and you're looking at 360 days. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. You um, have seven days for a total of 56 hours. Of, I'm going to change that. You have, this is, 
You have three days for a total of 24 hours of community service, 18 months of probation, fines and court costs in this particular case. I'm trying to make this something that you can do given your limitations. So I don't want to set you up for failure. But when you don't do it, I will put you in jail. Do you understand, sir? Yes, sir. So do it. Okay. okay. Fines and court costs in this case for a total of $275. $30 per month in probation oversight fee. Complete an assessment at Don Firm and follow all the recommendations. Sign a release of information for your probation officer and uh, schedule an assessment within 48 hours of this sentencing. You must attend the Mad Victim Impact Panel within 45, well, I don't think that's, we don't need that. Is there any part of what I said today you don't understand, sir? No. Okay. Serious, looking you eye in the eye, do what you gotta do. Yeah. Okay? Yes, all right, thank you, sir, you're all set. You need to contact the probation department within um, um, tomorrow after nine o'clock, unless is that Mr. Or Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Job, are you able to have him sign his report today, Chris? Or no, she probably doesn't have it. Right? All right, contact the probation department after nine tomorrow. Yes, Mr. Job. That would work best, Your Honor, if he calls us tomorrow after. I after like 10, because I will be in late tomorrow morning. Okay, after 10 o'clock tomorrow, do you have the phone number? You can give it to them. Do you still have it, Miss? I've got it. Yeah. All right, all right, please right. give it to him so he can call tomorrow after after 10 o'clock, okay? Thank you, Donna. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Good luck to you both.